Mighty flight. How are you feeling, Ray? Top of the morning, Miss Penny. <laughs> Luke, how are you? Hello, Joe. Horse? Howdy. Oh, sure good to hear a friendly voice. For a minute there, I thought everybody was deep. Or else I had a bad case of long Jesus. No, 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 we can hear you real good, Luke. Ah, uh, I guess you boys ain't heard, huh? Oh, no, we heard, we heard. Them fellers really took you to the cleaning, huh? Took it all, money, house, and everything. I guess them stocks and bonds are a little out of my territory. They sure did have it printed up on pretty paper. Anyway, I was out looking for a job when I run into you. Well, things can't be that bad. All I got left is $50 and my daughter Mina. You'd still have it all if you'd listen to me. That's what she said. Hello, Joe, Hoss. I Howdy, told you not to invest your money in that stock. That's exactly what she said. I told you the Fingo brothers were crooks. That's what she said. Hey, Luke, maybe you can tell us, where can we find Harvey Sprague? Oh, he's living with his son in Reno. Had a bad run of cars and lost everything he had. Hey, Luke, he, did, he didn't lose that little piece of land he had up in Pine Tree Canyon, did he? Lost it. Lost it all. But that wasn't no great loss. That land wasn't worth anything. Yeah, not unless you need it. Yeah. Well, you folks need it? Yeah, Paul needs it bad. Why, I sure hope he gets it. Hey, look, you don't, you don't know who, uh, who owns it now, do you, by any chance? Well, Joe, I reckon you find out at the land office. Yeah, good idea, Luke. I'll see you later. Bye, Come on, Joe. Joe. Luke, if things get real bad and you can't find a job, come on out to the house. Paul's hiring. Thank you, Hoss. Bye, Hoss. Good day, Miss Mina. Why didn't you listen to me when I tried to warn you, Papa? I sure am glad you're smart, Mina. Well, I'm smart enough to tell you. You're not smart enough to listen. Well, at least you don't have to worry about anybody trying to marry on account of money now. <laughs> no, I never said that people were trying to marry you for the money. You were the one that said that. Yeah, but you never argued with me. Oh. Hello, horse. Ben, Joe. Oh, hey, Mina. Ah, man. See, Luke. Joe. Luke, what's your wife? What's your wife? Ben, could I, could I talk to you for a minute? Why, uh, sure. Uh, fellas, why don't you, why don't you help me off the wagon? That seat must be getting pretty hard. There is a mill. Well, what's in your mind? Uh, I guess you haven't heard. Yes, I did hear, Luke. You've been gambling again. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm here, looking for a job. Here? You want to work here? If you give me a job. Well, now, I don't know. No. I'll tell you what I do, Ben. I'll flip you. Heads, you give me a job, tails, you don't. No, we got a cook, we got a man. But, for Ben, the I don't want no sissy job. You know, I'm pretty good at riding it. I ain't bad at roping. Heads. All right. All right, you got yourself a job. Now, Ben, just one problem. Mina. Oh, well, she'll stay on as our guest. Now, Ben, I don't know how long it'll be. Oh, well, that's no problem. We have plenty of room. Ben, I want to thank you. You're a real friend, a real honest to goodness, tried and good friend. And you won't be sorry one minute. Believe me. I believe you. Told me about hiring you. If there's anything you want to know or you got any problems, you just come to me. 
We turn the lamps down at 10 o'clock, so if you got anything to do, do it before then. Anybody for a few hands of poke before the lights go out? First rule, no poker playing in the bunkhouse, okay? Okay. Boss. What's yours? Luke. I haven't met you, Luke. That's not you. You got any special color you like? Um, black. I better warn you I'm pretty good at this game. Well, I ain't so bad myself. Well, you probably ain't as good as I am. So if you're feeling hurt easy, don't play me. Go ahead. Move. How about fifth cents game? You know, kind of make it interesting. Mm, well, I... Of course, if you ain't sure. Let's make it a dollar a game. What's your first name? Dave. Go ahead. Jump. <laughs> Go again. <clears throat> no. Don't take me but five games to learn my lesson. Hey, you boys else feel lucky? Hey, maybe Pete might. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Got a man over here who likes to play checkers for a dollar a game? Yeah? Well, how about that? What's your first name? Pete. Yours? Luke. Howdy, Luke. Howdy. You got a special color? Oh, black's fine. Would you care to make another little bet on the side? Hold him, hold him there. How about the rest of you boys? Oh, boy. Sucker money. Your move? It wasn't just the stock deal, Mr. Cartwright. Papa was into everything. He got gambling fever. Faro, roulette, three-card Monty. How long it took a drop of water to run down a pane of glass? Why, well, I'd bet on anything. One afternoon, Papa and Harvey Sprague sat on the porch for three hours, betting on who could spit the furthest. <laughs> well, I know Harvey's a gambling fool. He spits pretty good, too. Well, didn't you try to stop him? I mean, from gambling? Well, when it was just gambling, I didn't mind. You know, it was his money. He found that mine. Worked it by himself all those years. And if he wanted to gamble, it was his business. Besides, he usually won. But when the Fenco brothers started selling him stock, I tried to stop him. But it was too late. Well, Mina, wasn't part of that money yours? Not really. Papa raised me, loved me, taught me the difference between right and wrong and how to take care of myself. I figured he gave me what he owed me. The money belonged to him. 
You're a very unusual girl. <laughs> Other people have said the same thing. Oh, it's a compliment. Not the way they say it. Hey, Paul, you about ready to go with those books? Oh, yeah, I guess it's better. Oh, uh, would you show me them now? Yes, sir. Listen to me, watch your step. Why? Because she wants to get married, that's why. Joseph, everybody wants to marry somebody. She doesn't want to marry somebody. She wants to marry anybody. Watch your step. It's a nice night, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's a beautiful night. Would you like to take a walk? I'd love to, Oz. Uh, Oz? Watch your step. It's dark out there. I can look out after myself, little brother. I reckon he thinks I'm gonna step in a hole or something. Well, that's not what he meant. He meant for you to watch your step with me. Oh, no, ma'am. I don't... I don't, oh, don't try and cover up, Hoss. It doesn't matter. I make a lot of mistakes. Well, now, we. We all make mistakes. Yes, but most of mine are about men. Being raised all alone out there in that desert, just cop and me. All I knew about men was what I got out of books. And in the books, people meet, fall in love, and get married, just yeah. like that. It doesn't take more than just a few pages sometimes. But it just doesn't happen like that in real life. I mean, you can meet somebody and then meet somebody else. And then you can meet somebody else and somebody else and you haven't gotten married. And time just keeps passing, and I get the feeling that I'm never going to get married. Yeah. Well, Ma'am, do you fall in love with all of them? No, but I'm not as lonely when they're around, and that's got to count for something. Yeah, I reckon that's bad. Hoss, why do men think that falling in love is like falling into some kind of a trap? That getting married is like being locked up in a cell? Well, I reckon married men can't do everything they'd like to do. A single man can't do everything he'd like to, either. Well, that's sort of like locking himself up in his own cell, ain't it? Well, if I've got to be locked up, I'd rather be locked up with somebody than all by myself. Yeah? What's more, dumb and nothing? I think I learned my lesson. What about the rest of you fellas? What about two at a time? Three at a time? Four at a time? And if you lose one, you lose them all? Well, I don't know about that. Wait a minute. Okay, if I lose one, I lose them all. Double and nothing. Dave, Smokey, Ray, play the other game. across the top of that mountain. The only way we can get them to the mill is across his land. Well, why don't I ride over to Carson tomorrow and check around, and Hoss can cover Gold Hill. From what we know about Carter, he'll probably stop the first deck of cards he gets to. Well, let's try anything. We've got to pay that tip of Coover that they work or not. I just wonder if he doesn't want to sell the land. Now, what reason would he have to keep it? That 30 acres is the worst piece of land in the whole country. The only use anybody could make of it is to get across it to someplace else. Who would want that? Us? We'll, uh, we'll go first thing in the morning. Bye. 
right, boys, come see me. Come see me, boys. The old Luke. Thank you, I sure do appreciate it. Thank you, boys. <laughs> sure do appreciate it, boys. How about five minutes time? Six? How about seven? Turn out the lamp. Dusty gave me the day off today, and I'd kind of like to spend it in town. But I'm kind of broke. Sorry. I make it practice never lend money. You just lose friends. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a chance to win some of it back. Yeah, but... I know you're broke, but I still want to give you a chance to win some of your money back. Your time is worth money. You probably make about two dollars a day. So if you want to bet two dollars, you got to bet a day every time. Bet on what? How you spit? About the same as everybody else. I just pucker up and push. You good at it? About average. Well, you probably ain't old enough yet. You know something? Some men got spitting down to a fine art. They skeet it. How about chucking pennies to a crack in the floor? Close your pen and wins. Tossing pennies at a crack? Well, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what I do. You can chuck them face a crack, and I'll turn my back around and chuck them on my shoulder. That's like stealing money. Yeah, but it was your money to begin with. I'll bet you one day of my time against two dollars. It's a bet. Can I get a bet like that, too? I don't know about that. You've got some of our money, too, you know. I guess you're right. Oh, boy. Soccer money. Good morning, Miss Mina. Good morning. My name's... Dave Torrance. I know. How's that? I asked. Oh? I asked about all the fellas in the bunkhouse. Well, I, I didn't know you'd ever noticed me before. <laughs> it never hurts a girl to know all she can about eligible suitors, just in case one of them should become one of them. Oh, well, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Well, you must have had something in mind. I mean, you've been hanging around out here for 15 minutes waiting for me to come out. Yeah, well, I guess that's right. Uh, you see, uh, I was thinking, uh, well, I thought that maybe, uh, maybe, uh, would you like to go out with me? No. That's great. I'm helping Hop sing this morning. I'd be happy to some other time. Oh? Well, I, I wasn't exactly thinking about this morning. Well, when did you have in mind? Oh, I, I don't know. Any time. Maybe a... Fourth July picnic. The Fourth of July was two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Well, another one will come around again next year. <laughs> how much do you owe him? What? My, oh, who? My papa, how much? Four dollars and a half. But how'd you know? Well, you weren't very eager. It figured. I'm awful ashamed, Miss Mina. There's no need to be. Well, there sure is. After the matches and the checkers and the broom, I should have known he could pitch them pennies over his shoulder and hit that crack every time. Yes, you should. Thanks for asking me anyway. 
But I feel terrible about that, too. Well, you shouldn't. In a way, you are quite flattering. Is that so? The last fellow my papa told to ask me for a date only owed him a dollar and six bits. Look, Miss Mina, if I pay your pa back next payday, could I ask you for a date again? Of course, Dave. How about next 4th of July? And she went to put salt on the low of feet. Well, come here, come to look at your back. Come here, come here, come here. My dear, come here. Mina. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Good morning, Mina. Uh, Hop Singh is a little upset. Oh, really? Then maybe he should lie down and get some rest. I'll take care of things here. No, you don't understand. You see, Hop Singh is upset because you are taking care of things here. Taking care of the things which he thinks he ought to be taking oh, care of. Oh, well, I just felt that I ought to be doing something. And there's not much on a ranch that a woman can do except cook. Uh, Hop Singh is the cook. I know. I just wanted help. <laughs> you helping Hop Singh right out of kitchen. Oh, I did was put a little salt on the roast beef. Hop Singh don't need no help. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Now, you're the one who's always complaining about needing help, Hop Singh. At least three times a day, once at every meal, Hop Singh needs help in kitchen, right? Help is somebody who do what Hop Singh say, not somebody who tell Hop Singh what to do. Need help, not boss. All I did was put a little salt on the roast beef. Hop Singh know how to chop the onion. Hop Singh know when to put the salt on the meat. Hop Singh is boss in this kitchen. Right? He's right. OK. Hop Singh is the boss. I'll just do what he tells me. <sighs> OK. Too much salt. More about you. Hey, more about you. No, you're not going to Has the tack room been straight now? No, it's getting there. Has it been inventoried? Inventoried? No, but it's getting there. Oh, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. I thought you had the day off. And I thought you were supposed to be cleaning up the tack room. Oh, that's right, Ben, but you see, Pete owes me a day of his time. You paid him for a day of his time? No, I won it. Now, Louis, you know very well there's a rule, a strict rule about playing poker in the bunkhouse. We weren't playing poker, Ben. We were chunking pennies to a crack in the floor. But it, it comes to the same thing. Better get back to work. Luke, I want to talk to you. Now, Luke, you know, we have very strict rules on this ranch about gambling. But I'm not going to fire you. Now, do you know why? Because we're friends. No! Because if I fire you, I've got to fire Pete. And Pete is a top hand, and I don't want to lose him. If you want to gamble, do it in town. OK, boss. Can I help you? Oh. I'm looking for a Mr. Calhoun. A Luke Calhoun. Right over here, Garvey. If you look around, you could have seen me. Come on, we're going to talk to Bond. I'm Ralph Garvey. Oh, Ben Cartwright. Come on, Garvey. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure I like this, Mr. Calhoun. Deception, subterfuge, working behind people's backs, flying false colors. Well, that ought not to bother you. You're a lawyer, ain't you? Pete! You don't mind, do you? Come on. Excuse us, Ben. Like from a cow. Well, it's been in a can, hanging in the spring, so it's nice and cool. Well, when you've had as much to do with cows as I have. It's good for you. I'm sorry Papa got you into this. Oh, it wasn't all his fault. Nobody forced me to make that bet. I know. And I think you got what was coming to you. A man who gambles gets just what he deserves. I wonder what Luke ever did to deserve a daughter as pretty as you. Oh. <laughs> well, I've got certain drawbacks, too. I never noticed any. Why, Pete, I didn't think you'd ever noticed me at all. Oh, yeah, I noticed you, all right. Why, every day I went to town, I used to sit out in front of the hotel. And I used to watch you walk to the store. Well, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you come to call? You had too much money. Well, I don't have any money now. I know. And I was wondering, maybe we could take a buggy ride down by the river? Have a picnic. And we could talk. Get to know each other a little better. How about next Sunday? I can't. Well, how about the next Sunday? No, Pete, not the next Sunday, not any Sunday. I was just beginning to think that you like me. I do. It's just that I wouldn't want to get to like you too much. Why? Because I don't have any money. Well, that don't make no sense at all. Yes, it does. I'm thinking about Papa. He's getting kind of old, and when he can't work anymore, I'm going to have to take care of him, and that takes money. Are you going to get a job? Oh, well, either that or marry somebody with money. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'll ever be rich. But I'm not the type of man who'd let his father-in-law starve to death, either. Why, that's almost a proposal. Well, al almost, but not quite. Oh. I don't know you well enough to propose to you. That's right. And I don't know you well enough to say yes. You think those people in Gold Hill knew what they were talking about? It sure sounds like Bolt. I said that's all Carter was talking about, bragging about all the money he's going to make on that land deal. I sure hope little Joe has more luck in Carson City. Oh, oh that was a very good roast beef, I'm saying. Yeah, it sure was, as usual. Needs a little more salt, though. Need a little more salt. It's about our hill. Long story. <clears throat> I think I'll take a walk. Hmm. Wait a minute, Mina, I'll go with you. It's dark out there, you'll have a step hold or something. Somebody else wants to buy it. Somebody else wants to buy it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who'd want it? I mean, it's been prospected. There's no gold. Trees have been cut down. There's no lumber. There's no, there's no grass. There's no water. Who'd want it? Well, somebody does. He wants to wait and see who's going to bid the most for it. Well. <laughs> look, look. 
drive back tomorrow, tell Carter that we'll pay him $500 more than the other party would bid for him. That's what the other party said. Said what? They'd pay him $500 more than you'd bid for him. Oh. And somebody knows about the lumber contract. Mm -hmm. So we either pay him his price or pay off the mill for not being able to deliver the lumber. I think I'll ride into Carson City myself and talk to Mr. Carter. No need. He'll be here tomorrow. It's kind of anxious to see how high the bidding's going to go. No oh, bidding is. It's beautiful. The sky? Everything. The sky, the night, the ponderosa. It must be nice to live here all the time. Feel so safe. Well, we have a few little problems every now and then. <laughs> all that land, all those cattle. What kind of problems could you possibly have? Well, money, for example. Oh, Hoss. Well, ma'am, you, you can't spend land. And we got to drive the cattle to market. Well, if you need money, you can always sell some of the land. Well, but then it wouldn't belong to you anymore, would it? I mean, somebody else to have it. Then you can borrow on it. Well, but you got to pay that money back, plus interest. Well, at least you own all this land. Well, not necessarily, ma'am. I mean, did, did you ever think about it? I mean, do you believe that anybody ever really owns a mountain or a valley or owns a lake? I don't think so. I think that they're just sort of loaned to us for a while and putting our trust for us to keep and use. And then we pass them on to somebody else, and they sort of keep them in trust and use them for a while, and then they pass them on. You see, them mountains and lakes and them valleys was here a long time before we got here. And they're going to be here a long time after we're gone. And just who are you going to be passing it on to? Well, I've given that some thought. Uh, haven't you made up your mind yet? Well, I've, I've made up my mind as to how. I just ain't made up my mind as to who. <laughs> but then when a man's out here in a place this pretty with a pretty gal like you, oh. sometimes his mind can just sort of make itself up. <laughs> hey, Hoss. Hey, you ready to ride on a Samina Canyon? Well, I was fearing on doing that in the morning, Joe. Oh, no, no, we'll get an early start, and right the first thing in the morning, we'll be on a roundup. Yeah, but, but, Joe... I'll get your horse. Joe! Uh, da, da, da. Well, let's see. Uh, where was we? We were talking hey, about... Hey, better give me a hand with your saddle. In a minute, Joseph! Uh, what was I saying, then? Uh, you were talking about your mom. Hey, what'd you do with the blanket? You know, your, the big horse blanket? Well... I guess you'd better go help him. We'll talk about it some other time. Yes, some good night. Nice night. Yeah. What? <laughs> Matter, Luke. Oh, horse got a bad crew. Ain't got no sports in it. I try to work for a little game. Nobody wants to play. Luke, new rule, remember? No gambling. Well, Joe, it ain't exactly gambling. It's a little game. Put a hat down here. Take a step over here. Turn around. I'll give a man ten cottages. Cottages? Bullets. I'm willing to bet he can't chuck them cottages out getting one of them in a the hat. That's gambling. Why, it ain't gambling. That doesn't a man can't miss. Well, that's what I say. But nobody's fooling up to take me up. Look here. Who gets to throw the cottage, the bullets? A horse. Well, you yeah. always... It don't make a dip. You can chuck myself if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, any particular way? Any way you want to chuck them, Hoss. All, all at one time, over the shoulder, chuck them over the back. Don't make no difference to me. Chuck them any way you want to. And you're willing to bet that at least one of them cut bullets will go into the hat, right? Of course, you remember what Pa said? Joe, wait a minute. How much? How about $10? 
How about 50? Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. Joseph, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? That's a lot of money, horse. Put up a shop. It's a bet. I'll go get the cottages. Now, Joseph, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to teach him a lesson once and for all. You don't mind, dear Pete. Now, let me get this right, Luke. I stand right here on this line, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And here's your cottages. All right. Now, that's the hat. And it don't make no difference how I throw these bullets, right? That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shuck it. Oh, 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 no, no, oh, no. Sucker. Oh, oh, oh. Baby. Uh, excuse me, just a minute, horse. Come see me. Honest game for honest people. Sporty game for sporty people. What's going on? Luke came back here and told him horse could stand one pace away from the hat, throw the bullets, and not a one of them would go in the hat. Every man here figured at that distance, horse was bound to get one bullet in the hat. They're willing to bet on it. Dusty, what did Pa say about gambling? Well, yeah, but when they heard that Hoss was in on it, we figured it was all right. Hoss! Hey, Hoss. Sure do appreciate it. Yeah. Really showed him, didn't you? Hmm? Taught him, taught him a lesson he won't forget, huh? Listen, Joe, I... I feel bad enough about this like it is. And I'd appreciate it if... If you let me be the one to tell Paul about it. I'd appreciate it if you would tell me when you get ready to tell Pa so I can be ten miles away when you do. Look. <clears throat> Won't you do me a big favor? Sure, Joe. Tomorrow morning I want you to ride in the Ponderosa because I think Pa's going to fire you. What for? Game. Oh, Joe, you don't call that game. That's a little game. First thing in the morning, Luke. Okay, Joe, what do you say? Right here on Erin. Missy Mina out in bar milking the cow. How about fixing old Luke up a little breakfast? You want breakfast, you'll be here when breakfast ready. When is that? Flea hour ago. Tell you what, Hop Singh. You pick out a card, if I can tell you what it is, you gotta cook me steak, eggs, with chili peppers. And if I can't tell you what it is, you get that fat $10. And no breakfast. And no breakfast. You turn around. Turn around. You got a four. Is Ben Card right here? Mr. Carlyle out. He come back by and by. You like to wait? Don't mind if I do. Mr. 
Calhoun. Moment, Carter. Mind if I sit down? No mind if you do. That side of you brightens my day. How's your luck? Oh, no luck to it. It's all a matter of skill. Feel like testing out that skill? Well, I don't consider you a fair test of my gambling ability. I've seen you play. Oh, I saw you skin those Tin Horn Fanker brothers down at the saloon, but uh, they were lousy poker players. And you perfect them? That's how I make my living. Up, Sing! Yes, sir. You might clean up this mess. Cut your high card for a dollar. I didn't come here to gamble, Mr. Calhoun. You don't call a dollar gambling, do you? Double or nothing. Twenty dollars this time. No, like I said, uh, I really didn't come here to gamble. You bound to win this time. I was in your favor. My deck? As long as seals ain't broken. One hand of showdown for a hundred dollars. Good deal, Mr. Carter. New game, Mr. Calhoun. A little three-card Monty. I don't think I ever heard of it. Very simple. Two red kings and an ace. Find the ace. Have I warned you about gambling in this place? In the bunkhouse, Ben. This ain't the bunkhouse. Uh, ben, you know Mr. Carter? Mr. Cartwright. Carter? You're the fellow I've been looking for all over this country. We got a lot of talking to do, Mr. Carter. Uh, not just yet, please. Think you can find it again? Now, Luke, I will not have you turning this place into a gambling hall. That's right, Ben. You're right. And this absolute and last time, my word of honor. Luke? Ben! I know where that ace is. I can't lose. Well, I think I know where that ace is, too. Then why don't you pick for him? Not until you match that. Papa! You stay out of this, Mina. Sorry, ain't enough. This is the deed to that land I won from Harvey Sprague. I was offered $3,500 for it by a Mr. Greavy. The name is Garvey. Mr. Garvey worked for me, and I'm the man who made the offer. It's $2,500. Hold on just a minute now, look. You the fellow's been bidding against me? That's right, Ben. How could you, Papa? Mina, I'll tell you all about this a little later, just as soon as I pick this ace. And you, too, if you want to, Ben. You bet I want to. I want to hear all about it. Ought to be very interesting. I'll offer you $3,000 for this deed. I'm sorry, Ben, but it's already in the pot. Don't worry, Mr. Cartwright. Odds are we can't pick it this time. All right, Ben. You picked ace. You don't mind, do you, Mr. Carter? Oh, that ain't it, Ben. Are you 
sure, Mr. Carbright? Well, it has to be. The other two are kings. Uh. Well, easy come, easy go, ma'am, gentlemen. Now, about that land. It ain't for sale, then. It's a present for a friend. Yeah. Go ahead and take it. Didn't really cost me anything. Hold on a minute now, Luke. You mean to tell me you were bidding against me so you could buy it, so you could give it to me? That's right, Ben. You need it, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I needed it. Well, I'll, I'll pay the 3000 for it. I heard about you losing all your money. Well, it wasn't exactly that way, Ben. And Finko boys, they took everything away from me but $50. And then they got greedy and wanted the $50, too. So we got the little card game in the back room of the saloon. And I won back everything they took away from me. Plus everything they had. Papa, I don't want you to tell anybody about that money until I say so. Understand? Honey! I ain't gonna say one word to anybody till you got that boy firmly hooked. I think I'll take a ride up to Seminole Canyon, see how the roundup's going. <laughs> you old boy swag, <laughs> well, I, I thank you, Luke. I, I really do. Can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Oh, and by the way, you buy it. Ben, you're the one who picked Ace. I wasn't gambling. Yeah, that's right. You wasn't getting away. You didn't have to do nothing to win or lose, did you? I sure didn't figure that one for the ace. It wasn't. If that there's a king, and them there two kings, where's the ace? Probably right up Mr. Carter's sleeve, as if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs>